everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Business Growth Show, where we talk about all components of business and how to utilize them for exponential growth. My name is Ethan Cassiotis. I'm a business growth expert who help business owners grow and scale to create wealth and freedom. And today, I have an awesome guest. Her name is Susan Sheehan, and she is an international speaker, executive performance coach, and global entrepreneur. She's been a coach for 27 years where she has studied and been coached by leaders in the personal and business development industries, including having worked with clients across the globe. She has business in Australia and the USA, and a creative and curious mind has written books and programs that change people's lives. And Susan is the co-founder and managing partner of SC7 International, and she has a key focus on resilience as a high-performance coach for life and business. Welcome, Susan Sheehan, and thank you for being on my show. Thank you, Ethan. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Awesome. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing show for everyone watching and listening today. So you're a very successful entrepreneur. So for those people who don't know who you are, please introduce yourself by telling us about you and your journey. Wow. You know what? I I think my entrepreneurial journey started when I was 16. I was working. I had a holiday holiday job in the Apple and Pear Board in Auckland, New Zealand, Kiwi born. And I remember at morning tea, my mum had organized this job for me. And I remember at morning tea, this loud noise came and it's like oh my gosh what's that where you're now you this is this that noise is to tell you when to eat and pee and then of course it happened again at lunchtime and it happened again at afternoon tea time well I only lasted till lunchtime the next day and then I went home to my mother and I said there is no way on earth that a loud bong is going to tell me when I can eat and pee I am not going back there and, and I think I think that sort of I think that set the tone for the rest of my life you know to to really figure out and study what what it was really all about, I, I was always fascinated to why some people seem to have that Midas touch to success and other people do the work and do the work but never quite grasp hold of what's going on. Think about wanting it but never ever live it, you know. And and I and I, I just made it a life's journey. I, I started off in fitness and wellness and then I had a client say to me once, as a single mum, and she said to me, Susie, why don't you have a maid? Mm, that's a very good question I thought to myself why don't I have a maid I mean we all have maids and butlers right um this this client had private jets she owned hospitals in Queensland now my grandmother was very successful in business retired at 56 never worked another day in her life my mother lives a life of choices but we didn't have maids and butlers and private jets so there's a whole a whole different layer of thinking and I remember driving home from this client this particular day and, and I thought oh my gosh she she asked me if why don't I have a maid like she was just going to make me a cup of tea you know it was just like the most natural thing in the world for for her to think about having a maid so I, I went on a journey then of really going deeper into what was in the unconscious why did she think about having a maid was as easy as making a cup of tea when the thought hadn't even entered my head you know so so that took me on a journey of really wanting to understand what was going on between the years here why was it that some people achieved it and other people didn't and I identified that it all starts here uh, and being a single mum of course I I functioned in survival mode I always did my own thing but I was in survival mode I had a great little property in the hinterland and and you know I, I was independent with my two kids and and so we were doing okay but mentally, I was still in survival mode. It was all about making money to pay the bills, um, even though I had the, I had invested in this amazing property. So I thought, okay, it's really time to step it up. It's really time to really start to get inside some of these heads of these people that truly are living life of success. I need to know what is going on so that I can start to, to shift what's happening in, in our life. And, and so that was the first point of shifting my mindset, getting 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 that gear shift. Because one thing I've identified with, with truly wealthy people is that there's a gear shift change. You know, on, on a personal level, they're fun and, you know, they get down and dirty with you. But then you walk into that boardroom and there's a gear shift change. Business is like, boom, and it's serious business. And that was one the very first thing that I identified. The other thing I identified is that there are, there is, there is a way to think, but there's also a, a way of how to do things the right way. There's an order in which to do things. Um, there's skill sets that you need to learn. And so I went about starting to study what all of this was. And 
I decided to go down the route of learning business with coaches that had built multi-million dollar companies. I had a client actually at the time, I'm also New York trained Pilates and I had a Pilates client at the time who was doing a degree in business here in Queensland and she failed a paper and yet she was also independently successful. She failed this paper and yet in the real life, she had actually achieved success in what she wrote in this paper. Um, and I thought, yeah, no, I don't want to sit in the classroom with academics to talk about it. I want to be out in the real world and really learning how to do it from people that are doing it. So that just took me on that journey of really getting inside the heads, the hearts, the minds and the brains of these of, of the coaches of how to be successful in business. And I just set about learning it and failing at it and learning it and failing at it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I guess that's a snapshot of, of my professional journey. Mm. Yeah. And, I, and I had I had my first coach, um, my very first coach. My daughter is is twenty eight. I had my first coach when Kelsey was eighteen months. Um, I've always been into fitness, love exercise, and I was asked to I was asked to teach aerobics. I was in this in this aerobics class, and the instructor said to me, "Hey, Susie, why don't you come up and teach your class?" Yeah, no, no, that isn't going to happen. Come on, you feel music, you're great at dance. Come and join in. Yeah, no. Took her six months to get me in front of these 20 people to do two minutes. Well, moving on, six months later, I'm she's got me, trained me up, and I'm participating in a local aerobic competition. And I get on stage, practice, wore the carpet out of my house, I tell you. And my I went blank. I forgot the whole thing. And I ran into the bathroom crying. I was so embarrassed, so upset. This woman comes in. Her name was Caroline. Another Caroline comes in. She just looked at me. She says, what the frick are you doing? Get out there. I'm, I am not going back on that stage. But I did. And I came second. What 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 the transition was from when I was saying I wasn't to doing it? I I can't I don't know what was going on then, but what I did think about later was oh my gosh, if she hadn't been there to push me through what I didn't want to do, I wouldn't have got on that stage. I ended up then moving into national aerobics and made the New Zealand national aerobic um, competitions at national level. And I know that if I hadn't had that coach, and so that was my first experience of the power of coaching. Yeah, awesome. Love that. Such a powerful story and uh, what you've achieved over a long period of time. And I love that, you know, you've had coaches for so long of a period, decades, right? Um, shows the power of, um, you know, the help of external people can have, um, can have coaches and mentors on us and what it's helped you to achieve. I love that. Um, so let, let's talk about resilience because I know this is a big thing about what you do and, and it's so important. Now, um, firstly, like how do you define resilience and why is it important to have resilience? It's interesting that you should ask me that question because I've been doing a little bit of, um, you know, putting putting the microphone into people's faces of late, asking, getting, getting, you know, what do you think of resilience? If you hear the word resilience, what pops up into your mind? And of course, the the, the overarching for all of it is mental strength. Um, and and I think that it is that I think it is that mental strength. I think it's it's a it's a mental strength, but it also has to become a value and a driving force greater than the pain of staying where you are. I, I think it's I think it's falling down and just getting straight back up. You know, have you ever heard of that five second rule? You know, when you drop something on the floor, you don't let it sit, you only let it sit for five seconds. I think it's that. I think it's life happens and you know, events happen in our life and whether they're traumatic, dramatic, you know, horrifying, scary, sad, whatever the event is, if we get straight back up and and feel it while we're getting up, because when life happens, we have to feel the pain of it. That is essential. I look at it, liken it like a wave, you know, an event in life happens and, and you start to ride that emotional wave. And and I guess this was my learning is that I just rode the wave. I, I've always used the words, what do I need to do to feel better? What do I need to do to get better? What do I have to think about to do better? So that word better has always been my my brain anchor to keep going, to to get to get the answers I need, to get the results that I need. Um, and so I've, I've always done that. But what I didn't do when I was younger was actually allow myself to feel the pain. I would just ride the wave to shore. 
um, what I what I've identified is that we've got to sink into that wave a little bit and feel the pain, um, and then we have a four step formula where you identify the problem, reframe the meaning of the problem, release the emotional attachment to the problem, and then train the brain to see it differently. You get back up onto that wave, and then you you, you ride the wave to shore. So it, it's the ability to do that. It's the ability just to keep going, to push through, um, and get up, get up, and just ask that question: What do I need to? What do I need to do better so I be better? Awesome, love that. Really, really powerful. And I know you're big on mindset, right? As well in what we're doing, just generally, right? We, you know, which is part of it. So, what role does our mindset play, right, in terms of you know cultivating resilience in in supporting that? Let me tell you a story that I think really answers that question. I have a, I've raised a son with an intellectual disability. Matthew was born with three parts of his brain damaged, multiple food allergies, and he had a seizure every 20 minutes. And I would walk out of doctor's surgeries and look down at this little boy with this bronze ringlet and say, I don't know what we're doing, mate, but we ain't doing that. And I, I, I was... I was 23 years, 20, 25 years old. I didn't know what questions to ask. Little, I didn't know who I was talking to. I didn't know what questions to ask, but I just have always been curious. And I think being curious, as I'm sure you all agree, is a powerful success strategy. And, and so I would walk out of doctor surgeries and I would just, I would just say, okay, mate, what do we have to do to make this better? Again, I would just ask that question and walk out into the world and I would always always find the answer well Matthew is now drug free allergy free and seizure free um, because I never gave up I always stayed curious but he we're walking walking on the beach one day and he was um, 19 and he said I want to be a model oh my gosh a model oh, what you know it's like okay then so you know with my kids a little I always used the three and, and it was the same for both my son and my daughter if they wanted to do something I'd wait, they had to ask me three times, you know. So on the third time, maybe three months later, I said, okay, then, mate, well, tell me why you want to be a model. So he shared that and he said he wanted to buy a better car than his mate. So I said, okay, let's um, let's go figure it out. Found an agency. He went and did this modeling course. And every and he ended up doing, a, 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 doing three or four over a couple of year period. Um, then she said to me, why don't we put him in to do an acting course? Moving on from the story, he did this acting course. He had to recite the lines of Proximo from The Gladiator. They were written all over our house. We could recite them in our sleep. Um, he got the big cloak and he's on stage at the graduation in front of 200 people and he's under this cloak and he's not moving. He's just not moving. M my daughter said to me, what, what's wrong with him? And I said, I don't know. They took him off stage. We went out the back and he's under this cloak shaking and crying he was absolutely terrified and my daughter who is um who's a, who's a singer songwriter so he doesn't have a shy bone in the body um and of course his coach from this agency was there stroking his shoulder and his head and never mind darling and Kelsey just walked up pushed this woman aside and looked at looked at Matthew and said hey bro what about your car and you know he just just sort of like, you know, woke up. It's like, oh my gosh. He wiped away the tears, put back on the cloak. Kelsey actually went out on stage with him, but then got him started back, back, jumped off the stage and he recited his lines and got a standing ovation. Now, Matthew will never drive a car, but the vision of wanting that car, wanting that better car than his mate was it was so indelibly printed in his brain that's all he saw that it pushed him through that intense fear that he felt standing on stage in front of 200 people that that to me is is resilience and to really live with resilience you have to know what you want because there has to be a reason to push through that hard there has to be a reason to make sure that you know, because that fear can, it, it's like he was he was standing under this cloak, shaking and crying. He couldn't move. He froze in time. So resilience is having that mental strength, but you've got to have a reason to do it. There has to be a reason bigger than you so that you can push through that fear. And you know what? It takes 20 seconds of insane courage to break through a fear. Yeah, love that. What a powerful story. And I love that that vision. There's something bigger, right? Um, outside of you of what 
pushes you through. It's so true um, in anything that you do in life or business. So yes. really, really powerful yes. there. Um, love it, Susan. Great story. And uh, I, I and know- I get- and if I may just if I just may add then on a business perspective, I had this business, I had this business idea. Um, I was starting, I was doing it, you know, I was out there doing it, um, making money, not not heaps of money, but making money, loving it. Um, it was a wellness program for for women, and I decided I needed an investor. I bought a course, studied the course for six months, flew to Melbourne. One of the scariest things I've ever done in my whole life. Flew to Melbourne. I stood in front of ten, nine men with an excess of a hundred million dollars between them, to present my idea to these men. And of course, I failed dismally. I mean, I had, when I think about what I know now to what I didn't know then, it was like hilarious. But I was so incredibly terrified by the whole. I must have stopped at every bathroom between home and Melbourne. Um, and it was just so terrifying. You know, something happened in my brain when I was presenting it. I thought to myself, what is your problem, girl? These are just mere males with more money. And and once I changed the way I thought about it, the energy changed. I, I felt less fearful. And when I was flying home on the plane, I'm thinking, can you see me, guys? I did that. You know, I, it was, I felt so, I felt so powerful within myself because I had done it. You know, even though even though I didn't I didn't get any money, I did have dinner with a couple of them, and they they gave me the ins and outs of what I could have needed to do better. Um, but that was something that I did that was one of the scariest things that I did when I first started studying business. Um, and you know, even though I didn't get the result, it was still such a significant piece of my growth. You know. Yeah, I love that. So true. It's uh, you know, the key thing there is, you know, you do something for the first time, you think it's really scary. But once you do it, you're like, okay, well, that was all okay. okay. It was good. I can get better, right? And then less fear, and and you can build that up over time. So love that, and a great business example as well. And I know with resilience as well, there can be a connection with resilience and adaptability, right? So do you want to talk a little bit about adaptability and how you know that can help with our resilience too? Well, you know, adaptability is 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 about developing, I think. It's about developing behavior patterns and being able to look look, let me back backspace that a little bit. As 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 human beings, we can be very adaptable. Um, the brain is very adaptable, the body is very adaptable, you know, wherever we put ourselves, some of us, some of us adapt better than others. Um, I'm very good at change, so I adapt easily anywhere. Some people are challenged with that, and I and I think you know the being resilient and being adaptable can go hand in hand because the more resilient you become, the more that you know that you can, and and because we know the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. If you know that you're resilient in one area and you can adapt there, well, we know we know scientifically proven that you can you can map that over any situation in life, and I think the more resilient you become the easier that you adapt to different situations because it's less scary and, and you believe you can. Yeah, I love that. So true. Um, you know, those different areas, how you can take that experience that you have where the resilience and move it into other areas because you've done it before in other ways. So true. And, um, you know, a little line I remember hearing is that the, the, the person with the most, like you talk about behavior there, the most behavioral adaptability or flexibility is the one that like is, is the best in that situation, right? Because it doesn't always happen exactly the way that we think all the time, right? <laughs> Normally it happens way different in, in any situation. So to be different, if, if you get a curveball, like any of these experiences you've talked about, is how quickly you can adapt to that is, is how, you know, good, well you're going to be in that situation. So, yeah. And I'm very good at curveballs. Yeah, I love it. And <laughs> it's, it's oh, fun, I'm right? Really like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm quite good at curveballs, and and I'm helping. I'm 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 very good at helping other people cope with curveballs as well. Yeah, and yeah. and I think it comes down to the mindset. Um, you know, like I know with us, right? Like you know, on today there was no preparation with you, Susan. And when I go on other podcasts, there's no preparation either that I do, right? But we have the mindset that we can be adaptable no matter what question we get asked. We're going to yes. deliver some great value, right? And these are the, the traits that we have. Just so people understand this deeper thing, right? So they're going, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Well, you just got to believe that you can and you put yourself in that situation and you get better, right? 
Yeah, it's interesting. It's, it, it's interesting you say that, isn't it? Because I guess that's partly, you know, I've got a diagnosis. If we want to go into the neurodiversity subject, I do have a diagnosed ADHD brain. I was diagnosed about seven years ago. Um, and I said to this neural coach, and, and he's a world acclaimed neural coach. Um, my mother could have told you that when I was seven, but when I was seven, there wasn't any such thing as neural diversity. I just had this energy that drove everybody crazy. <laughs> But um, I guess I, I guess I've I've always I've always been open. I remember I had a um, I was one of the coaches at a five star hotel here, and I was one of the managers and had my own coaching business that I ran from here. And then I had a supervisor as well. And he said to me one day, "You know what, Susie? We're going for lunch." I said, "Okay, cool." So off we went for lunch. His name was Nathan. I'll remember him forever. And he sat down and he said to me, you know, that you're one of our most favorite people. You know, you, you, you just you just get in there, you get the work done, you're great with the people, we love you, but not everybody gets your energy. And so I would like to talk to you about how we can bring in and hone in on your energy. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, wow. Okay, let's do it. Tell me what to do. And so I've always been open open to listening and learning how to, how to be better. I didn't take it sensitively. I just listened and thought, well, okay, well, that makes sense. You know, I think I, I think we to, to adapt, we've got to be open to learning and listening, letting go of what's not working and being open to seeing what we can do better, right? Because then it allows us to be more adaptable. If we're going to hold, hold fast onto who we are without changing it, then you'll never adapt to anything because you'll stay in that box of, that, in, let's call it that comfort zone box, you know. Um, and then about 12 months after this conversation, I ran into, in a car park in a supermarket, I ran into a woman that was at the same school. Her daughter was at the same school when my daughter was at preschool. And, and I've never been one to have clicky, clicky female friends, but I was friends with one or two different women and she was one of them. So we're talking in the car park. And then she says to me, stop. She said, what have you been doing? And I went, oh, well, I've just, we've been sitting here talking for 15 minutes about what I've been doing. And she said, yeah, no, but she said, we've been standing here talking for 15 minutes, but I don't feel like I've run a 10K race. Mm. Love it. And, and, I just, and I just smiled her and said, gave her a big hug and said, oh, my gosh, this shit's working. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, ask me what I did. I couldn't tell you what I did. All I know was that I was open to listening. I didn't take it sensitively. And whatever whatever we had decided I was going to practice, I did. And it, and I guess it's been a lifelong journey for me just to always figure out what I need to do better. And, and I think that's one of the keys to growth in business, isn't it? To be open to listening, learning, and doing things better. Yeah, definitely love that. Um, and learning from great coaches and mentors um, like ourselves and our coaches and mentors. Um, now let's talk about a bit earlier in life, right? Because I think it's important about like with children and young adults, right? Because I, I see it that there's less resilience today. So what tips can you give, I guess, of, you know, building resilience earlier in life and maybe the role that as parents or educators and, you know, people that are around people play in this process to set the next generation up with, uh, with resilience? Well, I'm a little bit of an expert on this subject. <laughs> I, I, had, I um. In fact, we've got a whole webinar on it: how to build resilient kids for this for this for this adventure we call life. I'm just going to I'm just going to just give you tips um, that that pop into mind, and and I'll use my daughter as a story because I I I give her credit for everything I learned about about kids. I remember when Kelsey was three and she said something to me and I remember the day like it was yesterday I stood there and looked at this beautiful little girl oh my gosh she makes sense oh she makes sense I've got to listen to this she makes sense she was three and then when she was eight she said to me mama you're not hearing me and I said yes I am I'm listening to everything you're saying mm -hmm -hmm, but you're not hearing me and and so I implore parents to stop and not only listen to what their kids are saying, but to hear what they mean and hear what they're not saying. And, and I think that that is the first step to, to building a relationship. I, 
I guess because of the way my brain works, I I just used to just like brain fart, no filter. The things would just come out. You know, I would just say things as they came out. Embarrassing, yes, sometimes. But what I did achieve was open communication. Um, and sometimes it doesn't matter if you have this, if you if you have this like going on. Um, it's better to be free and open about communication than to keep things inside. I have always listened to clients that had kids before me. And I remember one guy saying to me, always remember that your daughter doesn't need another friend. She needs a parent. She needs a parent. Um, and always consequence. I was always really grateful that Kelsey understood consequence and compromise. And I think if we hear our kids, no matter what situation they're in, because that's really, I think that that is really important. If we're going to have um, open conversation, open communication and the freedom with our children, then they have to feel safe to talk freely to us. And they have to know that we are hearing what they're saying without judgment or criticism. And no matter what they do, no matter what happens in their little in their lives, they fall down, they get back up, they have to know that it's okay. And and there has to be boundaries. I mean, I got I got home one day. Um, again, I was a single mom, as I said, and I got home. I had we had this big family room. Kelsey was 16. And I got home, and there's a three-quarter size pool table in our family room. And and she had a group of 15 friends. And I said to her, What on earth was this? And she said, well, mum, the, the boys won it and none of the other parents would let us have it. So I said, oh, that's cool. Mum will let us have it here. So here comes the next thing I learned and I share is that never react emotionally immediately. Take a big deep breath and walk away from the situation. And then I walked away. I made a cup of tea and thought, oh, my gosh, what's she doing to me now? What is the what's it? Okay. So I walked back out and I just said, to her, well, I'm, I'm curious. You know, what does this mean? What does this mean having this pool table here in our family room? Well, that just means that we're going to have a pool party every week. Yeah, no, it's not going to happen. You've got 48 hours to get it out of here. So, <laughs> but but the the what I did learn um, is that when you react emotionally, then you lose control um, the, the child then takes over and you're just you, you just you just get lost in this emotional turmoil and and there's no there's no positive outcome to that and as we know when we make decisions in a heightened state of emotion whether it be extremely happy or extremely sad pissed off angry whatever um, that it's always the wrong decision we have to be in a cool calm state of being to make the right decisions so my I always suggest you know walk away gather your thoughts be cool and calm look at the situation with reason and come back here's the next piece I've got a deal for you teenage young kids they like that word deal and and I think that I think that when we follow some of these guidelines in communication that the kids are just learning to to really know that it's okay to fall it, it's okay not to be perfect um but it's not okay to do one two and three i think it's absolutely okay to be honest with children so that they know that you're human but kids don't need to know all the story of adults bullshit they don't need to know the responsibilities attached to adults but they do need to know the simple truth and I think it's okay for your kids to see you in pain. I think it's okay to, for your kids to feel what you're feeling as long as they don't get pulled into some of the adult the, the adult crap because they don't need to know that. Um, and I think that if we follow some of these simple rules of thumb, then our children can grow up believing in themselves, believing in other people. Um, I remember saying to Kelsey once, I said, you may think that you, the world is your oyster, baby, and it is, but before you can step out and do what you want, you have to understand self-discipline, respect for self, and respect and responsibility for others. And those three things are you're just learning about. So you know what? Let's make a deal. <laughs> um, and and right now, right now, she um in June and July this year, she toured America with Billy Idol as his support band. Amazing. So that so that 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 determination that she had, that that desire to cross every boundary, 
that independent thinking is, is crazy. It's crazy hard as a parent. But if you if you just hang in there and 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 see more than what's seeing and figure it all out so that it's a win-win for everyone, I, I, I guess it's about you're not in control of your kids. You're not there to control their life. We're there to guide their life. And, you know, it paid off for us. I remember the day that Kelsey walked through that bubble and I thought, oh, there she is. <laughs> There's that beautiful young woman I knew that was in there somewhere. Um, and, of course, now she's doing some amazing things. So that, uh, it, that is my experience. I've shared that with hundreds of people, um, and it seems to be a very simple rule of thumb. But I think the big one is just to be kind and have courage. My two favorite words, be kind and have courage. And if we're kind and we have courage, so are our kids. Yeah, I love that. Such a powerful story um, on how we can help that that next generation and the young adults. And um, just one thing came to mind uh, with me when I was in my 20s, right early in my career, is um, from a business perspective, you know, a lot of the time we don't like hearing the word no, right? Um, and, and we need to build that resilience up. And I, I think I, I was able to do um, cold calling, actually door knocking on businesses for about six months. And I think this is, uh, I recommend this to anybody at whatever age you are, um, earlier potentially the better, um, because I, I knocked on 60, you know, doors in a day and got no's basically from everybody, right? And it, it takes a lot of resilience to go, all good, dust yourself off keep moving, right? Go to the next one, still put your best foot forward. So I think, you know, putting yourself in these situations where you're not necessarily going to just be everyone agreeing, getting what you want, builds that resilience, you know, not just from the life perspective, which is amazing, which we definitely need, but also from the business perspective. Um, I, the I had a different experience with my door knocking on, on selling encyclopedias or whatever it was. <laughs> Did it for two weeks, hated every minute of it, didn't make one sale, never doing sales again. <laughs> And that can hold you back, right? Like, you know, going forward, you know, in business. And this is where those experiences can shape you. You can either, you know, potentially go down that route and then never be successful in business and go back to doing something maybe that's not your passion or your purpose. Or you can go, you know what? I'm here to learn something. I'm going to keep going. Hopefully you've got great people around you, whether it's coaches and mentors like ourselves or other people that can help move you forward, right? Um, and go, it's just a learning. You'll get better start to improve in different areas and then it'll get better like that. So I think it can go either way and it's our choice. Um, and, and that's why resilience like you've been talking about is so important, right? Because that's going to be the difference between us actually moving forward and achieving what we want to achieve. I think the other I think the other thing that I think it's important to know is, is even though I didn't enjoy not door knocking because I went from the apple and pear board to selling and not encyclopedias. So that was that was my it was like boom. Um but what 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 is important to understand is that even if you don't enjoy something and you don't get the result you want, when you're stepping out of your comfort zone, there's always some sort of change happening because change, rewiring the brain or or building that building that resilient muscle happens silently and subtly. You don't know that it's strengthening. It's like you know you go to the gym and you do a bicep curl or you do lunges and and you start to see the butt lift and the thighs shape and the bicep muscles start popping. It, it doesn't happen that way with the resilient muscle. We don't see it grow until we actually do something or we achieve something or we feel confident in something. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, where did that come from? And that's why personal development is so powerful because it, it's building that muscle just every day when you just do. We call it my different daily. What is my different daily? Because if you do that one different daily, you are you are slowly building that resilient muscle. And then one day, it's like, oh, my gosh. It's like me when I was presenting in front of these, these angel investors. You know, I, I had just, you know, I had grown into that. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to do it, do it the two years previously, but I grew into it because every day you're growing a little bit and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my gosh. I'm so cool. I did that. So, so I think that's important. That's why just every day focus on doing a little bit better in some way. And it doesn't matter what part of life it is because the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. Yeah. Love that Susan. So, so powerful. Um, so true. I completely agree with, with all of that. And it's been a very powerful episode today. Love that, um, you know, resilience 
adaptability and uh, how you do everything. And I guess as we're wrapping up, what one key piece of advice would you like to give all the further information um, that you've given us today for the entrepreneurs uh, watching and listening today? Can I share? Can I share one more quick story? Of course. I was, I was walking on the beach with a client, a guy, and I quite often walk and talk with people. Um, when you walk and talk or walk and read, you remember more. Just a little tip there. But we was walking on the on the beach with this guy, and it started to rain. Okay, I love walking in the rain. I don't know about you, but there's something there's something invigorating about raindrops. He ran for a tree. He ran for a tree. And when I got to the tree, I said, to him, "What on earth is that all about?" Oh, I couldn't get wet. And I just looked at him and said, there's your problem. There is your problem. You don't like being uncomfortable. I said, you know what? Every time it rains, I suggest that you go and stand in it, feel uncomfortable, be uncomfortable, fall in love with those raindrops because that's part of that is that we've got to not just step out of the comfort zone. If you truly want to build success, you have to fall in love with being uncomfortable. And just by that one little incident on the beach, I identified immediately what one of his weaknesses was. I identified his problem that was going to keep him stuck where he was unless unless he decided that he was going to be uncomfortable. And you know what? I wasn't able to work with this guy anymore to this day. And that was four years ago. He still doesn't stand in the rain. He still doesn't like being uncomfortable. Ask me what he's achieved. No, nothing, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. So be okay with being uncomfortable. Be okay with be okay with being uncomfortable. Be curious and be consistent. I think the three C's are amazing. But here's the big one. What is your heart pumping core desire? Heart pumping core desire, because it is your all success is driven by what you want but yeah it has to be heart pumping so every single every single cell in your body drives you and 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 drives you to push through those hard bits and that's when you build the resilience so um how to contact me um meet susansheehan.com forward slash speaker um put my name in i pop up personal message me direct message me, um, download download a free copy of one of my best-selling books um, and just, just, just start today right now believing that it's all possible for you. Yeah, definitely love that. Definitely connect with Susan on all of those mediums there. And uh, it's been a very powerful episode. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, uh, Susan, for all the, the knowledge bombs and golden nuggets and everything that you've been <laughs> sharing today uh, it's been a pleasure uh, i look forward to uh yeah, working with you and seeing you grow um further and um, you. you're welcome and uh i just want to thank everyone for listening uh, to this show as well where we talk about everything on business growth which also includes all our life and mindset things right because this is all linked to our business and uh please like subscribe and leave us a five-star review and you can find me on linkedin facebook instagram or youtube is Ethan cassiotis or visit my website athencassiotis.com if you want to grow and scale your business you can reach out to me on any platform to see if we're a good fit and I completely agree with you, or do I? The only way we know is if you tune in next time. So until next time, remember that our business grows when we learn skills and take action using them in spite of fear. So remember to design your growth and results. Mm -hmm.